Hello everyone, and welcome to my first Skyrim Anniversary Edition build. I've been having a lot of fun playing through the new Creation Club content, and wanted to put out a build as soon as possible. So today, we've got a nice, simple, but rewarding character build, designed for survival mode, and to take advantage of all that entails. Anyway, enough of the preamble, let's just get on to the build itself. The main skills for this build are Sneak and Archery. Yes, I know what you're thinking, but don't worry, this isn't a Stealth Archer build. Well, not entirely at least. The Sneak skill is here primarily for avoiding combat, rather than using it just to land sneak attacks and receive bonus damage. Its major use is making it so you can run away from challenging fights, crouch down, and have the enemies forget that you exist. That being said, you'll still eventually want to get the Deadly Aim perk for more damage when you do sneak attacks with your bow. Speaking of damage, that's what you're going to want to get from the Archery skill tree. Damage is the main focus from this skill, as you really don't want to shoot most enemies more than once. On the left side of the skill tree, you'll eventually want to get the Quick Shot perk, and on the right side of the tree, I'd recommend going up to Ranger, so you can move faster with an arrow knocked. As for minor skills, we have Light Armor and Alchemy. The character wears exclusively Light Armor, so you can get the Custom Fit perk for a greater bonus. However, you'll never be wearing all of the same type of armour, so the matching set perk is one to avoid. When it comes to alchemy, this is really just a skill to invest in with whatever perks you have spare. While crafting potions in Skyrim is one of my greatest joys, the limited carry weight and reduction for beneficial potions in survival mode makes it unrealistic to collect every alchemy ingredient you see, and you can't just carry around a hundred different potions and poisons with you. It is still good to occasionally craft a poison if you're going up against a tough fight, and a few health potions too. While I'm not giving it a full place in the minor skill section, you may also want to consider the smithing skill tree. The primary reason for this would be in order to craft better quality arrows, but I'd advise holding off on this until you start getting the ingots needed. The standing stone for this build is the thief stone. It's a very simple and early one to grab, but it covers all the skills for the build, so it just means 20% faster leveling. When it comes to powers, the most helpful one will be the Bosma Racial Power, Command Animal. Once per day, this will allow you to turn hostile animals around you to your side, which for a build that spends most of their time in the wilderness, is a huge benefit. Being a Wood Elf also grants you bonuses to every skill you'll need to use with this build, making it a strong starting race to go for in at least some aspects. When levelling, you're going to want to go for a 50-50 split between health and stamina. The health boost can help you ensure you won't die from too many stray arrows or animal sneak attacks, whereas stamina has the dual benefit of letting you sprint for longer and increasing your carry capacity. The weapon for this build is the Bow of Shadows. This is a very powerful bow that you can get early on, without too much difficulty. Its unique effect lets you draw the bow faster than any other in Skyrim, and turns you invisible for 30 seconds after equipping it. The second effect has obvious benefits for self-attacks, but also is great for ducking out of combat. Just get some distance between you and your foes, crouch down, and draw the bow to turn invisible so you can't be tracked. It's also worth noting, this enchantment is permanent and doesn't need to be recharged with soul gems. Additional weapons you'll want to have with this build are the fishing pole, pickaxe, and woodcutter's axe. These each will allow you to gather various resources that the character can make use of, be it crafting ingredients for arrows and camping equipment, or fish to both cook and hand in for quests. As this is a survival mode build, we have two sets of armour, one for warm weather and one for cold. The warm weather armour is the Elven Hunter armour, boots and gauntlets. While this is a cool new set of armour, it sadly doesn't have great warmth rating, so when it gets cold you'll be wanting to switch to wearing fur armour, braces and shoes. While these items have a lower armour rating, they have considerably great warmth ratings helping you avoid freezing in the snowy mountain paths, or when it rains at night. There are also pieces of apparel that you'll want to keep equipped at all times. These are the Torturer's Hood, which you can pick up at the start of the game in Helgen Keep, the Hunter Backpack, which you can craft early on and will provide you with bonus carry weight and bow damage. Honestly, backpacks are crazy good, so I expect all of my Anniversary Edition builds to have them. And finally, we have the Ring of Surroundings, which gives a 20% boost to sneaking. But you're probably wondering how to get some of these items, and for that we'll need to head over to the Factions and Quests section. This character is a bit of an isolationist, so none of the factions in-game really fit all that well for the build. 
The closest fit in terms of factions would be the Bard's College, however it's by no means a requirement to join them. What is a requirement is to complete several of the new Creation Club quests, the first of which is In the Shadows. To acquire this quest you'll need to head to Dragon's Reach and talk to the Steward, who will give you a note about an assassination attempt on the Yarl. By stopping the assassin, or letting the guards do it, which is the easy way to do it, you'll get the Bow of Shadows, the main weapon for the build. And in order to get your main armour, you'll need to pick up the Once a Hunter quest by reading a note inside of Falkreef Guard Barracks. This will mark an ex-bandit on your map, who you can go and kill and get their old armour. One tip I'll give for this quest is that the command animal power is of great help. The next quest to focus on is literally just around the corner from the bandit you just killed. On the compass you'll see an unusual house icon, that of Hendraheim, a player home you can acquire by killing the Nord outside and taking the key off their corpse. There's a surprising amount of murdering people and stealing their stuff from the new content. The final quests you'll want to embark on with this build are all the fishing related quests. The most important of these is Clear Headed, which requires you to get a fish for Zarya in Grave Concoctions, the alchemy store in Falkreef. Completing this quest will grant you the Ring of Surroundings. When choosing a follower for this character, you'll want to avoid any humanoids and instead go for a pet follower. While the character doesn't like relying on people, having an animal to give a helping hand and provide a little companionship is fine. I personally ended up with Thistle the Rabbit, who can be found at the Alchemist Shack. The playstyle of this build is a combination of stealth and combat archer. You'll ideally want to start combat with a stealth attack, and then either switch to combat archer style, where you focus on loosing as many arrows at your enemies as fast as possible, or flee from the combat, and utilise stealth for things that look like they won't go your way. This is a character more focused on surviving than doing anything grand such as saving the world or becoming Fane of all the holds. She's also an isolationist, who has an aversion to gold, and will avoid towns and other people most of the time, only heading into civilization on the rare occasion. When playing as this build, I focused around the camping and survival elements, and whenever I gained gold, I instantly threw it away into the closest container. This meant there was no purchasing goods or services, and I had to be self-sufficient. If I needed food, I had to find it or hunt it. When it came to sleeping, I would make myself camping supplies at a forge, and then deploy it wherever I happened to be. After playing through the game so many different times as some powerhouse of a character who'd go questing and constantly be focusing on making gold, it was a real nice change of pace to play as a character who was just focused around getting by. The Elven Hunter was raised within a group of nomadic hunters. The group led a simple existence, living off the land and focusing on basic survival each day. This was her existence for the best part of two decades. It was a very frugal life, so when a travelling merchant stopped by the group, they eagerly listened to his promises of a better life. He wanted to make a deal with them, selling their excess pelts and food in order to get them gold, which could be spent for luxuries they'd never be able to acquire on their own. The Elven Hunter was a little suspicious of the merchant, but the rest of her tribe seemed eager to pursue his offer. Her friends were able to convince her to go along with them as they followed the merchant back to his camp in order to further discuss what the exact deal would be. The hunter had a growing sense of danger as they approached the camp. It seemed far too large for just a trader of animal goods, and there were metal cages at the back of the camp. This sense of danger was confirmed when armed bandits charged out from the bushes, surrounding the nomads and bearing swords at them. The merchant's demeanour changed from jovial to cruel as he ordered the bandits to escort the captured group into the cages. The merchant explained that they were slavers, and ordered the rest of the bandits to find the nomads and capture any they could, and kill any who resisted. With tears rolling down her eyes, the elven hunter was forced to watch as those she had grown up with were put into a life of slavery, sold off to the highest bidder, or slaughtered if they were deemed too weak. For several years she was subjected to a cruel existence of pain and misery. Finally, a chance struck for her to escape. The slavers were ambushed by bandits while travelling on a northern road. During the fighting, the elven hunter was able to flee and run off into the woods. She kept running for hours and hours before finally collapsing in the woods near the border of Skyrim. When she awoke, it was to a sight unfamiliar to her, but all too recognisable for us. Thank you all very much for watching my first Skyrim Anniversary Edition build. I'd certainly like to do more of these, so if you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe with all notifications on, and give the video a like to show support. 
I'm still exploring a lot of the creations and coming up with build ideas, so there should be plenty to look forward to. If you fancy some other builds right away though, I already have a huge playlist of Skyrim builds I made for Special Edition, so give that a look. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.